You must follow all instructions and procedures found in the OPW installation manual for this product. All OPW automatic tank gauge systems and components must be installed in accordance with the National Electric Code in FPA 30 and 70, and all local codes. All precautions must be taken to follow OSHA guidelines for working safely in a potentially dangerous environment. Please take the time to go to opwglobal.com and download the Flex Probe Manual and follow along while you watch this video. The installation of a Flex Probe requires a minimum of two people. On this probe cap here, you have a three-quarter inch support down here. Then you have a half inch for your junction box. One thing that a lot of technicians do out in the field is they try to hold the probe up from the top here. It causes undue strain on the probe when you're getting deliveries and everything. It causes this piece to flex too much. And once this gets damaged in here, the probe will no longer read. So what you want to make sure you do is that you support the probe from the bottom. So you have this three-quarter inch connector here. You want to make sure that you have a coupler that supports it in the tank. And then you want to make sure you put a um, junction box over top of this opening here because this isn't sealed in the top of this probe. And if you go ahead and get water in there, it'll actually cause the probe to short out and um, it'll corrode over a period of time and you have to replace the probe. You see in this piece right here, this is um, a very rigid piece on the probe. This is very important. This is where the electronic head of the probe is. It reads the magnostrictive wire and does a communication back to the tank gauge. You must make sure that you never bend this piece. If you bend it, the probe itself may function, but you're only going to read a very short section of the probe. We'll say that the probe is maybe two or three inches long, or you'll get a, um, a really high and valid um, product height. And when you go and install it in the tank, the one thing I've noticed a lot when installers will put these in is they'll put this in and then they'll have the cap on top here and they try twisting it, and it's twisting the entire probe in the tank. And remember, when this is in the tank, and you have your suction down here, you have some pretty heavy weights on it. So what's going to happen is, is the weights are going to hold that section of the probe and then you're going to be twisting the entire shaft and it'll cause this electronics piece to break. So you want to make sure you have some sort of union piece up top here so you aren't twisting the entire probe when you're trying to tighten it up in the tank. They made this reducer device here. This is going to screw into one of the bungs on the tank and this is going to give the ability to support the probe. As we were talking about before, you can see it has this three-quarter inch opening here. This is going to slide on the probe from the bottom, where you have to cut the wrap. It's going to slide on upside down onto here. You're going to slide it on all the way around as you're putting the probe into the tank. We want to cut this connection here. Now cut only the first wire tie in order to assemble the hardware on the end of the probe. Because this is a shorter length probe, you want to make sure that you have room to slide your fitting on. Make sure you slide it on so it's going to end up right side up. So we'll slide that on first. When they send you the probe kit, it's going to have spacers and everything. The only thing you really need is the float itself. And you want the magnet to be closest to the product because that's where the reading is going to come from and you want a spacer between the magnet and the weights. So we're going to slide this on so it looks like it's going on upside down. Now depending on the length of your probe, you may have one weight or two weights. The weight is always going to be the same design. It's going to have the tear doctor design. And also when you have the water floats, the water float will come down on the top of this weight right here. You have your pin. It's going to go on the end of the probe, and this is what's going to keep your weight on. It's going to keep the float and everything else on too. You want to make sure you get all the tape off because if you leave the, some of the tape on it might disintegrate into your product. So you have your little pin, make sure you don't drop this. Now it's really important that when you get these weights on you start supporting the probe. Cut the tie wraps one by one as you gently unroll the coil. It's 
It's really important now that you have the headpiece exposed before you cut this, you want to make sure that you have the top of the probe supported. Remember, grab the probe by the head and do not twist it. Twist the three quarter inch union piece below it. If you need to twist the probe, make small turns and stop if you encounter resistance. You may damage the electronics. Now we're going to thread our junction box on. Take a picture of the probe's tag or write down the serial number for later use. Make sure to dress your cables so they are out of the way and no one will trip over them during maintenance activities. So if this was an adjustable piece, like in the manual, you'd want to make sure that the probe is touching the bottom of the tank, and then you would pull it up a couple inches, because the probes will actually grow during temperature changes. 